Bono, um, uh, you know, he, he sometimes portrays himself as a protester. I've been protesting for years. I mean, if you look at what he's doing in relation to the G8 uh, this year, for example, he, he's putting out an album of protest songs called Agit 8. Uh, in reality, uh, his organization is campaigning, you couldn't say protesting, but is campaigning for exactly the, the development model, exactly the uh, investment model that the G8 leaders and Monsanto and the Western corporations and f foundations want in Africa. There's no protest there whatsoever. But Bono will still say things like, you know, don't think I'm going to stop banging at the door of the politicians' offices. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, it's been a long time since he had to bang on any doors. You know, when they see Bono coming, the butler slides the door open discreetly and he comes in. He, you know, I think he, he literally used it in relation to number 10. I, don't, I won't stop banging at the door of number 10, where he was, an, I, you know, through the Blair years where he was an honored guest and indeed uh, Tony Blair was an honoured guest in uh, in Bono's home in Dublin. Well they serve well. each other's purposes. They serve each other. I think uh, Blair in many ways was the uh, was the epitome of, of, of Bono's partnership and was a was a similar figure mm -hmm. in some ways. You know I like you could you could argue Obama who uh, I think keeps his distance from Bono a little more clearly than Blair does but Blair uh, in his memoirs uh, pays great tribute yeah. To uh, oh, to Bono, he says uh, Bono could have been a president or a prime minister standing on his head. So Bono could have stepped up. He had the data on 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 a four sheets of paper from the organizations that he'd been working with. He could have stood up there and he could have read it out and said, "This is exactly how these uh, masters of the universe have betrayed their promise to the poor." And instead, he got up there and he said, "The world spoke, and the G8 leaders listened." Yeah. You know? And um, and he fell I, out with a lot of those humanitarian organisations. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that that is a that's kind of a clear breaking point in India yeah. in some ways. I mean, the London Independent reported later that year, uh, celebrities hijacked uh, anti-poverty campaign organisations. Say, you know, Red Pepper had a very a longer yeah. piece uh, documenting the the betrayal that the uh, organisations felt at that time. And in many ways, that's 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 basically the last time you can. Uh, you can associate Bono with anything like an organized left, let alone a sort of organized, uh, you know, the, the traditional global development community. Uh, so, and and therefore you get the one campaign moving in the direction that it has moved now, where it's essentially a kind of a wing of the establishment. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that moment in 2005 was a moment where he could have where he could have jumped off the yeah. stage. Uh, as he, you know, as he famously did at Live Aid when he jumped off the stage and he went down into the audience, he could have jumped off the stage at uh, Glen Eagles and, and and gone down to the audience, as it were, to the organizations. And you know, some of those organizations uh, piped up at the time, and they, they, right at the right on the day, you know, the uh, and Blair's memoirs are really funny about this. You know, the um, some NGO bloke says Blair, some NGO bloke stood up and said that we betrayed Africa and the usual little bollocks, you know? And, uh, and Bob, it was in this case, rather than Bono, Bob basically tore his head off and chased him down the corridor as only an irate Irishman can do, says, uh, says Blair. So, so, uh, so Geldof and Bono essentially ran the interference for, uh, for Blair and kept the, uh, you know, kept the, the negative messaging at bay. They hate negative messaging. Bono hates negative messaging.